This is the brand new McLaren 750S Supercar, the lightest, fastest, and most powerful series production McLaren yet. Actually, it's got more power with that V8 out back than the McLaren P1 has. Today, we're gonna find out what it's like, how it comes together, and then I'm gonna take it out for a drive. I can't wait to find out if it's really the new benchmark supercar because that's what McLaren is calling this vehicle. It's got its targets aimed directly at the Ferrari 296 GTB and GTS. Is it really gonna take it down? That Ferrari has over 800 horsepower. And and it's a hybrid. This vehicle has almost 80 horsepower less, but it's got a secret weapon. That is the weight. This weighs over 400 pounds less than the Ferrari 296 GTS variant, which is what the Spider 750S is competing against. Oh, and by the way, as a bonus, I think uh, I'm gonna try to find out if it shoots any flames. And it doesn't have some of the LT track features such as rolling burnout mode. Yeah, we've got to test that out. <laughs> now we've got to talk about what the Spider does for the 750S. You would obviously expect the weight goes up. Yeah, it does by about 108 pounds. Altogether, this is still a 3,170 pound supercar, which is a lot less than these new hybrids coming out. It's crazy to think about how supercars are now getting close to 4,000 pounds, if not past it. It seems like McLaren knows this and they're trying to hold on to their lightweight DNA as much as they can. This drop top is a hard top, which is made from a composite. And then you have a carbon fiber reinforced upper structure giving you rollover protection. This hard top is just like the supercar. It's a super hard top. It goes up and down in just 11 seconds. That is very, very fast. And it has an optional electrochromatic roof, which I'll show you when we get inside. I need to explain one big thing. You probably are wondering, what does 750S mean? What does it mean, Austin? It stands for 750 PS. In terms of brake horsepower, the normal horsepower numbers we look at here in America, it's a 740 horsepower supercar that is utilizing the four liter twin turbocharged V8 out back, which has got a lot of upgrades from the 765 LT. We'll get to that shortly when we wrap around to the back. But first, let's start off with the front. Now, coming to the front, and of the 750S, a lot has changed here. It's kind of subtle at the same time, and the reason why is because you can evolve aerodynamics so much without visually making the craziest changes. Thankfully, the team have found a way to not only increase the downforce, but specialize on maintaining a better balance for the front to the rear end. And that's why if we look all the way to the very front end of the vehicle, the very front tip, the splitter now is further pushed out than the midsection versus other 700 series McLarens. The center nose is actually further out than the front splitter. What they've done here is that they've elongated the body formations with the paint going further out into where the corners would be and then give you a black lip in the middle. This lip helps to create the front splitter, making it longer and diverting airflow from the top and the bottom of the car. So coming in closer, the airflow is being grabbed and it's feeding the air more efficiently to the front end low temp radiators behind the hidden and recessed front headlights. I love these eye sockets and for the 750S now, you can get Get body colored uh, for the front finish inside. I am a fan. Please let me know in the comment section down below, would you get it with the black finish or the exposed carbon fiber finish for the eye sockets? Or how about the way this one looks right here in front of me? The eye sockets are narrower on the 750S. The idea here was to make the front end of the vehicle not have more downforce in the rear or less. The balance of vehicle means going into a corner, it will be much more stable and neutral. You can actually see the McLaren logo, not only with the design of the headlights, how it's swooshing around, but also with these air extractors on the hood 
Coming further even to the side fenders, let me show you this really cool upgrade right here. Backing up, I wanna talk a bit more about the airflow that you're getting next to these front fenders. In front, you're actually getting an exit vent right in front of the wheels. What's happening is that you're getting cool air being sent to these front wheels and brakes through that low temp radiator and then they're trying to expel air outside around the front wheels. It's all about trying to manage airflow to give you less drag and more stability. My glasses almost match the blue of the paint color. These are actually McLaren sunglasses. They're really cool because the side framing, they're dihedral doors. They go vertically. You have a brand new a carbon fiber louver system above these front wheels, which actually, if you look closely, these are independent McLaren emblems. Yes, it saves weight being carbon fiber. I would highly recommend getting the exposed carbon fiber finish right here because it looks even better. It has money. This is an $8,000 upgrade, $8,000. Dollars. It's actually providing an effect other than saving weight. It's reducing a lot of the turbulent airflow you get in inside this wheel arch. Sometimes the air can build up like a pocket. Putting a louver right here, you're pulling out that turbulent air, reducing the front end lift, maintaining more front end grip. Another really big upgrade is that the 750S actually comes with the lightest ever wheels fitted standard on a series McLaren. They lower rotation mass by over 30 pounds, which is everything on the racetrack. If you think about it, rotational mass is a weight figure that you're dealing with on every straightaway, every corner, every single input you put into the vehicle, you have to use extra force to control the motion of your wheels. Unsprung weight means way more than standard weight because standard weight is fixed. This is a moving weight figure. By lowering that, the steering feel, the connectivity, the feedback, all moves up. The vehicle itself, I like to say, with lighter wheels, your vehicle can feel like it weighs significantly less than it does. They have made the same brakes on the Senna available for the 750S for that $20,000 price tag. The carbon rotors are the same size at 15.4 inches, and you're also getting six piston calipers. The big difference is that the rotor you bought took seven months to make. It improves brake brake fade resistance and durability for the track to let you go longer without replacing different OEM pieces of equipment. Let me know your thoughts. Are you a fan of this wheel? I'll put over on the screen right now the lightest weight wheel. I just found it out. It's a turbine wheel, not the Vortex. I thought it was this one. Moving to the sides of the 750S, you still have the dual skin doors, meaning when you walk up close, you can see a massive opening right here in the middle, which is you used for airflow to be carried right over those fenders and be accelerated straight down into those intakes. There's also a reason why this side mirror is so far out again, because if it was closer and there's an arm right here, you'd be blocking that airflow. This is exactly why I love the body lines of the 750S. You have the massive air escape right here to pull out more of that turbulent airflow out of that front wheel section, giving you a cooling as well for the brakes to pull out that air. There is a brand new air intake very low down. You can see it right there. This helps to provide the extra cooling needed. Here comes one of my most favorite parts to talk about. That being suspension, a lot has changed with the suspension system of the 750S. You have brand new bespoke accumulator tuning. You have lighter weight springs. Also, you have a revised suspension geometry to give you better agility, steering feel, and connection to the road. People don't give enough credit to how far suspension systems can can go to make a vehicle way faster. Getting behind the wheel of every other McLaren I've been in, the linked hydraulic setup has been very, very good. And this is the next generation version of it. This is the third generation PCC, which means proactive chassis control uh, system. That is the hydraulic link suspension again. It's their best yet. Also, when we're talking about this new gen suspension, it does weigh less. It's about three to four pounds less than the standard hydraulic suspension that we've had before. 
and they've changed the spring rates a bit. You're about 3% softer up front and 4% stiffer out back. When you consider the aerodynamic balance of the vehicle, when you're increasing downforce, or if you're trying to make the front end feel neutral mid corner compared to the back, you need to know how far you can go with spring rates. Using this setup, they're saying it's much more a neutral mid corner, it's more compliant on the road, and it's more confidence inspiring to utilize all the performance out of the vehicle. The way I look at it is after all these years, they found out through each iteration, mm, this was really good, but how can we make this a little bit better? And then how do we improve on that even more? This feels like the final most polished version seemingly. The terminology I'm really hearing from the McLaren team is expanding the dynamic bandwidth with what the vehicle can do. How far can it go between each extreme? Can it be the most comfortable McLaren yet, but then the fastest? Effectively, they're trying to make the car feel agile, lightweight, and very connected for when you're taking on any type of corner. Actually, let me turn the vehicle around so the back end is perfectly overlooking this Vista, giving us all the bright light to show off the changes, the details out back. Okay, this is my favorite view of the 750S, the back, because looking at it, come on, this rear spoiler is straight off the 765 LT, and you have totally new meshings and grills and decks all over the back section of the vehicle. Even the rear bumper is totally new. And if I walk forward towards where the camera is, you can see this exit vent right here, right? Well, that's to help reduce the airflow out of where the back wheels are. And then again, that helps with brake cooling as well. It's all about maximizing aero efficiency. However, there is one compromise. If I back up, there's a little bit of an indent on the rear spoiler, this is to help you be able to see. And when you're driving, you can make the spoiler stay in a raised position. So right now I've hit the button that says arrow inside the cockpit. It's lifted up the wing a good amount actually. And when you hit the brakes too, this will shoot all the way up and deploy as an air brake within half a second. It's very fast. You might be wondering why are there so many holes going in the back of the bumper, Austin? What, what, what's the point of that? Is that going to get the engine really dirty or all the... Uh, exhaust systems dirty well okay when you're producing more horsepower 30 more horsepower and 20 more pound feet of torque there's going to be more heat in the engine compartment the idea is not only to produce that much power but also to improve the cooling of the vehicle and not, not worry about overheating the supercar that's the last thing you want to think about with a car that costs almost $400,000 on average. This is over $400,000 with options. I'm talking MSRPs, okay? MSRP for the Spider is $345,000. 21K more than the coupe. And to go back to the meshing again, what does it remind you of? Well, it reminds you of the 765LT and the Elva, all those pinnacle McLarens, they're taking the best from them, even that central exhaust with the oval design inspired off the McLaren P1, they're blending it all together to create maybe the best of both worlds. I had the unbelievable chance to go to the factory and meet the engineers of the 750S. Talking with them, they're extremely proud of this new exhaust system. It's featuring a new crescendo note where the two exhaust pipes are be bouncing off each other with the noise. And then also they have new reflections and different upgrades to give you more of a vocal range all throughout the RPM. Interestingly, the rear spoiler and its standard uh, DRS mode I'm calling it where it's not lifted up effectively giving you the least amount of drag possible it's actually lifted higher up than the previous uh, predecessors for this vehicle it's about two inches raised because of this stainless steel exhaust system in the middle another funny thing is that when the wing shoots up or is raised right here there's a third brake light hidden away on the bottom I wish I could show you the engine in front of us but it's hidden away 
because this is the spider with the retractable hard top. You can get to it. You can even hit a button and it'll raise up the tonneau cover. Then you can get to uh, where you add fluids and more. There's a lot with the engine that's changed. And let me give you a quick rundown right now. This is a flat plane crank V8 with race inspired dry sump lubrication. It's got lightweight connecting rods. The boost pressure is increased because of ultra low inertia twin scroll turbochargers. Effectively, the cylinder pressure is going up and then combining those upgrades with a newer high flow uh, fuel system, they're able to meet that flow requirement to give you more power. You even get the same internal pistons as the 765 LT. Here are a few cool facts. Now, if you did get the uh, Tech Lux interior, which this has, you get the upgraded ambient lighting for the interior. And they put an ambient light in the engine compartment. So when the sun goes down, uh, it'll highlight and have a halo of red over the engine. If you're not a fan of spiders, hey, I understand I'm more of a coupe kind of guy myself. I like getting the uh, available roll cage, a titanium roll cage system you can get with McLarens. Only available via the coupes. It'll go right here. For an extra $8,000 on top of that, you can get a glass glazed cover underneath the rear glass that shows you the engine compartment from inside the cockpit. It's a lot of money, is it worth it? Again, let me know your thoughts. You actually have dynamic engine mounts. So when you're driving aggressively, it'll give you the vibrations in the feedback of the engine, just like the LT models. And then it'll calm down when you're driving smoothly. It's a cool idea, which goes back to that original comment I made earlier. It's about creating a dynamic bandwidth where you can have the best of both worlds, the best from the LTs, the roughness and the edginess when you want it, but then you can calm it down. We need to talk about the transmission and the diffuser down here. First off, the diffuser is going to be a uh, carryover, one of the few carryovers on this vehicle. There's an all new gearbox. This is the gearbox from the 765 LT with the shorter final drive ratio. In gear acceleration is going to be way faster. It's going to be climbing through the gears way faster. No, it can't go past 210 miles an hour like the 720S can. It tops out at around 206. This transmission down below is a seven speed and it actually takes technology from Formula One with a nickel chromoly alloy crown and pinion setup within the transmission for the final drive. The internals are engineered for the highest performance possible. There's one other cool feature this transmission has that I want to test out here today. There is a limit downshift feature, meaning when you go to downshift and let's say you're too high in the RPMs of the superseding gear, it won't let you downshift, but it'll remember that you wanted to do that. So when you break a bit more, it'll save that request and then pop it into the gear below. Okay guys, I've written down every single piece of weight savings this vehicle has. I'm just gonna jump around real quickly for you so you understand. Right away, this comes standard with the Sport carbon-backed seats. This one has the upgraded comfort seats. You can see them over to my right. This gives you a heated functionality. They're adjustable. Now, the lightweight seats actually save 38.6 pounds, plus you have the 10 spoke wheels, the turbine wheels that saves an extra 30.4 pounds on top of that. Now backing up this windscreen right here, I believe it's the same off the 765. It's lightweight and it saves 3.5 pounds. I could not find a number for the fenders, but the fenders are lighter with the carbon fiber option because you're getting a carbon fiber massive fender with the louvers right here. But coming backwards, you're saving four pounds with the binnacle display that is attached to the steering column. You're also saving 3.5 pounds with this rear wing that's even bigger than the 720S, the same size as the 765. This saves 3.5 pounds. You're saving almost four pounds with the suspension system, as I mentioned earlier and you're saving, what does it say? 4.8 pounds with the steel exhaust 
out back. Stainless steel. That means altogether, the lightest weight spec version without counting all the MSO options, is gonna be around 3,062 pounds. This is 3,170 pounds compared to the 765LT. Uh, specifically, the coupe was 2,952 pounds. Now, I have to say something real quickly. Those specs for the 765LTs are without AC, the sound system. I don't know of any 765 that doesn't have the AC and the sound system installed, plus, Every 765 that I really see on the road has the comfort seats. Those at 40 pounds come on realistically like for like spec. If you disregard the four kilograms that you get for pulling out the carpet, uh, it's gonna be just like each other. I mean, you could even play it like if I weigh 160 pounds versus a driver of a 765 that weighs 200 pounds and he's got the comfort seats, we basically have the same vehicle weights. Okay, here we go, opening up the front hood of the 750S. As you know, uh, there's no engine up here. It's a mid-engine supercar. I want to highlight on how much space you have. Obviously, I can fit all my camera gear, a massive bag, plus a drone, anything else I need. So I would say, yes, you can make this uh, very livable for everyday drives. You can put some uh, suitcase bags in here, too, if you're going on a GT, a road trip. Even if you're going to the track, you can obviously fit uh, your helmet, maybe even a couple more with racing suits. It also comes with the America's package standard. It's a $2,000 option. So could you call it standard? I don't know. You have to pay for it when you buy a 750S here in America. It gives you like the roadside assistance kit, the trickle charger. Uh, on the other side, you can see you have a fire extinguisher. You need that for a vehicle of this caliber. I'm not saying something's going to happen. It's actually, on the other side, there's netting and I think there's a uh, McLaren booklet in there, a little bag. Let me pull it out. Let's see what What's inside? I haven't seen it yet. So if I pull it out, Gurkha trademark leather McLaren. You've got orange stitching all throughout. Let me uh, go ahead and open it up and let's see inside. There's a massive booklet in here. How do I get it out? It's just so, it's so big. Oh my gosh. Everything's bespoke and custom with these vehicles. I believe this is your handbook, right? Owner's handbook. So inside this service book, it basically tells you about all the service requirements for the vehicle, even like the three year complimentary maintenance, because when you buy this vehicle, yeah, you get three years complimentary maintenance every uh, 10,000 miles or uh, one year, whatever comes first, you get to take your car into the dealership and they will do all the, they'll, they'll do the works for you to make your car running optimally. All right, let's close the hood and move on to the next area. Okay, here we go, getting inside the 750S. Now to get inside, there's no conventional door handles anywhere. You can't find it on the far right. It's gonna be right here underneath the double layered skin of the door. You push in on a button that's hidden away. It's a mechanical button. The window will lower to break the seal. And then just like that, you can raise your vertical dihedral doors in your McLaren. Now, here is your Tanu cover control where you can lower and raise it to get access underneath where the uh, roof is right now. Down below, if you want to trailer your vehicle, you need to hit this button right here and it'll disengage the alarm. And this one enables the alarm. For closing, just put your hand right here in the bottom of where the air gets pulled in, and that's your handle. Soft close, it shuts. This right here is a segment exclusive. As you can see, there is the forge or bare carbon fiber weave of the chassis. It feels pretty smooth, actually. It doesn't feel rough. I love the carbon fiber door sill upgrade this one does have. Well, <laughs> It's a bit familiar in here, right? You have to get over a carbon fiber a monocoque tub right here in the corner, but thankfully it's, it's lowered. It starts up high and it goes straight down, so it's much easier to get in than the very early edition McLarens that we saw back in the day. Down below, this is your 750S badge indicator. I'm a really big fan of this motorsport inspired aluminum pedal setup with the hollowed out interior bits for when you get on gas and the brake. It's actually very evenly set up so you can go quickly from gas to brake without having to pull your foot back and push on a brake pedal that's closer towards you. This is a uh, center point, really. This is where you're going to spend all your time driving the vehicle. And you want to be in a new generation car in 2024, don't you? Everything is getting so high-tech and advanced. We're getting hybrid McLaren uh, Arturas. We're getting uh, Revoltos coming out. 
come on, we need newer technology. So McLaren, they knew this. That's why they've infused design elements from the Artura, even the Alva, for example, by having this instrument cluster mounted on the steering column. It actually moves with the steering column. If I hit the uh, engine start button to give the electronics uh, the kick on, I can actually move the steering wheel and my view to the gauges does not get obstructed. In every other car I've really been in, if I want to change my steering wheel to go higher or lower, you could end up blocking your gauges. This gives the central driving view that you always want in front of you. A cool Easter egg that people don't realize in McLarens is that you can upshift and downshift with one paddle shifter right here. I can push forward and this will pull the paddle shifter towards me because they're connected on one big mount. So you can upshift by pulling forward and then push forward to downshift. This means that I can drive with one hand out the window like this, upshift, downshift, and have a good time. You have the Bowers and Wilkins sound system in this vehicle. The AC controls feel pretty cool. They spin left to right or all the way around 360 degrees. They feel pretty high quality. You can get them surrounded with carbon fiber as an option, but just depends on how far you're willing to go with the price. This right here is the Tech Lux interior, which gives you leather everywhere, the upgraded ambient lighting. You can choose to get it with the Bowers and Wilkins sound system upgrade and more. Then there's a the performance interior, which which gives you Alcantara. A big upgrade versus all the other McLarens is that we have a new generation front lift system. It raises in just four seconds and it's extremely convenient to get to. It's right here in the left. Hit it one time, it shoots up in four seconds versus 10 seconds for the predecessors before this. Here's your locking button to lock and unlock the vehicle. And then here's your frunk release. Even in the middle, you have a new central uh, infotainment uh, display. You have Apple CarPlay standard. I believe Android Auto is coming. I heard that. Don't quote me on that. I use an Android. Where's my Android? I have a Samsung. Let's go ahead and start it, shall we? <laughs> wow. If I press on the rocker switch for handling, I can go upwards and that turns on sport mode, which gives us an orange shift indicator. All the way in track mode, you have the conventional McLaren style that goes left to right and it caps out at 8,500 RPM. On the bottom left, do you see this little switch? This is how you control the left side of the screen. So by pushing backwards or forward, you can go through different displays. So let's go back a page, scroll down. We have the tire gauge, which will turn on once we get rolling. Here's your vehicle status. You can check your battery level indicator. You can also check your oil status and the vehicle will tell you what level your oil is at on a digital dipstick by revving up to a certain RPM, like two to 3000 RPM, holding it for 30 seconds. It'll tell you what your level is at. So that is a brief breakdown of the display in front of us. You also have a brand new next generation display in the middle. The infotainment system has been enhanced very far. You have variable drift control. So to turn it on, you need to turn on a dynamic mode by pressing the dynamic button, hit open right there. Now we can choose our drift angle or our slip angle is the more technical term. And I can choose to dial it down or increase the performance where when I start turning, it's gonna use the electronic stability control with the brakes to try to rotate the vehicle and hold a certain angle. This does have an open differential with brake steer, meaning it'll apply brakes on the inside or the outside of the car, depending on if you're turning left or right to grab and act as a differential. But to get to the AC controls, hit the fan icon down below. You have a little indicator of a guy with a helmet or a girl with a helmet on. <laughs> I like that feature. All McLarens that I've been in have had the Easter egg of the racing helmet for the driver. If I go to the main left page, you can also dive into your tire settings. So by clicking settings, clicking tires, I can choose what tire I have engaged right now. We're driving on the standard P0s. So right here, this basically means what pressure I should be running at. And then for high speed driving, it says go to 39 PSI. I like that. Outback even tells us our width. Look at that, 345, 30 by 20 outback by 245, 35 by 19 up front. In track mode, what I can do is I can choose what PSI I want to save as my 
favorite setting. And then when I lower my PSI for the air pressure in the tires, it won't alert me while I'm driving that the air pressure is too low. That's very useful. You do have ambient lighting and I can choose what my favorite color is for the ambient lighting all in the vehicle and I can turn up and down the brightness for driving. If I go to audio right here, I can actually change how the Bowers and Wilkins sound system is tuned. Right now we have driver focused engage, which will centralize the music towards me. If I hit on stage, it'll develop surround sound inside the cockpit. It shows you an illuminated indicator to give you an example of how it changes. Then studio is true sound as the artist intended. Very cool, the different audio sound system modes you have with the 750S where you can customize your tones, your balance, your fade, all the features you're really worried about. Right here is your aero selector. By hitting this button, it's gonna shoot up the rear wing just like that. If I hit it when I pass speeds like 20 miles an hour, it'll lower and it'll automatically use the DRS function as needed. For track mode, it's gonna be resting pretty much in that position. And then for the braking zones, it'll deploy the air brake. You can actually save your favorite settings with this car, even including hitting the manual button right here. If I go into track mode and hit manual shifting, and then go into track handling selector, I can save this setting with the aero brake turned on by clicking the new McLaren Control Launcher Kiwi button and holding it. Then it says saved. Mode changing setup saved. Now, anytime I get inside the vehicle, I can hit one button and everything goes into my favorite mode and my rear wing DRS shoots up. That's very nice. This mirror now is fully glass. You don't have massive plastic bezels on the outside. That feels much better. <laughs> Good McLaren Easter egg right there. Underneath the McLaren control launcher, here you have your launch control button. Hit that and it'll build the boost for launch. You do have one cup holder way up here behind the infotainment system. It works very well. It'll fit water bottles. I wouldn't put a big gulp in there. No way, you're in a supercar. You have a cigarette lighter right there. Moving all the way back behind the drive neutral and reverse indicators there is your hazards and then the auto start and stop weird feature with this vehicle whenever you start and drive it auto start and stop is turned on I would hit it because I'm not a big fan of the vehicle turning off on me when I'm driving there is a little keyhole you see that little spot you can slide your key right there and it won't go anywhere at least that I know of just yet behind me this is where you can control the roof by pulling up it'll raise the retractable hardtop and pulling down it'll lower it to my left you can control the back window pushing it up raises it and pushing down lowers it so you can have the roof up and then the back window down so you can hear the exhaust at all times thankfully this cup holder i think uh, might be a bit bigger though i would not put a big gulp soda like from chick-fil-a in here oh and by the way here's a little bit of a cool easter egg for you that is the yin yang from surrey england where they build the mclarens their factory has a little lake that is that shape of the yin yang then the opposite side is the uh mtc mclaren technology center where they design these vehicles and even build them let's go ahead and raise the top just 11 seconds it takes wow that is really fast and then once it's up can you see the blue tint well that right there is the electrochromatic roof and by clicking this button right here with electricity, it helps to change the intensity of the dimming. So now it's less intense. You can see these uh, circles, right? That's from the uh, polarizer on the lens. So ignore that in real life. It does not look like that. It's pretty dang clear. Oh, by the way, if you want to put a little something on back, you have a tiny bit of netting right here in the middle. Well, wow. closing up the doors, I'm a really big fan of the style of these speakers with the lasered out aluminum finish and then these massive swooping pieces of aluminum i think it is the leather all throughout this interior is very soft to the touch it just feels like the most polished and well-built mclaren interior i've ever really been in it doesn't feel like it's gonna rattle it feels very well put together. Let's put it in drive and see how it performs. Okay, here we go guys, getting a feel for the McLaren 750S up here on this mountain. We are currently in a track, track mode of the wing enabled right now. Let's get a feel and see how the whole car comes together, shall we? Oh my gosh, it just kicks into light speed. 
They've also sharpened the steering rack, making for a quicker uh, turn with ratio. It just feels so light on its feet. Partly because, again, those uh, those wheels are extremely light. And unsprung weight means so much. How can the balance feel so good? Getting on corners, getting on power. <laughs> It's the best way I can put it. It's a roller coaster where when you get on a roller coaster, you don't feel scared of the roller coaster, yet it's so fast. That's what this is. Here's the thing that a lot of cars have a problem with. Yes, a vehicle can be extremely fast, but to reach the performance maximizing factor of it can be next to impossible because they're too hard to drive. They're too sketchy. They have snap over steer or a pendulum effect when they kick out. They're not responsive or linear when it comes to uh, tire slip. When you get in this, it makes it feel like I'm able to hit that threshold of speed, that maximum threshold of speed, much easier. And that's how you tell what car is faster than other cars. Get the fastest car ever, but if you can't reach that threshold, then it's not fast. <laughs> side by side just to see what it looked like when I drove the 765 Spider through these same roads getting on power in the same exact way. I wonder how they look because driving back to back, it's weird. This is a different type of speed. Let me explain that a bit better. The acceleration, the thrust feels the same to me, but the way I am actually driving the cars differently because in the 765, it's got that uh, edgier persona with I'm working it a bit hard. I think I'm moving the steering wheel more often with this. It utilizes that 720S easy to drive factor where all the advancements in tech, when you're getting behind the wheel, it's just easy to drive fast. It's smooth. It doesn't feel like you're on the edge, yet you probably are at the same threshold of performance as other vehicles where they feel like they're on the edge at all times. This doesn't give you that perspective. It feels perfectly in control the entire time. Steering feel is insane with the hydraulic assist. I'm also not getting the big whiplashes and bucks. We're in a track mode right now with the inertia push, which is the uh, smoothest gear change you can get. If I pop it in a sport mode, I wonder if we'll get any of those uh, tuned in whiplashes from the ignition cut that the McLaren sometimes have. Let's try it. Yeah, see, very smooth again. 
Wow. Let me hit it on dynamic and see if I can notice a power difference as well. Dynamic opens up the ESC or stability control and traction control systems to go a bit further. Wow. <laughs> Those pops are incredible. Feels way lighter than a 720. Okay, so here we go, guys. Let's test out the launch control feature of this 750S. It should be very similar to other models. Come on, zero to 124 in 7.3 seconds for the Spider. Goes to 186 miles an hour in just 19.8. Um, you have a gigantic launch control button right here in front of me. Let's hit it and uh, see what happens, shall we? So, five, four, Let's put the windows too, shall we? For extra arrow. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm waiting full throttle. Boost building. Boost ready. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow! Jesus. The wing just shot up! <laughs> wow! I'm speechless! That's fun! It's so fast! It hooks very well, actually. Um, now, obviously, we don't have the Trofeo R's on, which are an option. They're an option for the car. Boost ready. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh! Wow! Brake test. <laughs> so, launch control to a threshold brake. It just, it just bites. Oh my gosh, the, the, the thrust. It's agile, but easy to drive. It's easy to drive. Fast. That was insane. Let's see if it has rolling burnout mode from the LT. I have to uh, get out of dynamic setting, click and hold uh, the attraction control system so that it turns everything off. So all I have to do is put no foot on the brake, my foot to the floor in the gas pedal and watch what happens. You ready? Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> it's got rolling burnout mode! And brutal! <laughs> this thing is so crazy what you can do with it! It's got the LT track features! It's got the 720S supercar easy to drive threshold and then it's just so relaxing at the same time. I don't know how you, you can do all these different things. The threshold is right there alongside the 765, yet it feels more obtainable, more reachable for the average driver. Okay, it looks like the temps are getting pretty warm. Let's let's see if it shoots any flames. Okay, it's gone a bit darker. I'm gonna give it a few revs. <laughs> There you have it, the McLaren 750S, taking the best attributes from the 765LT, the 720S, even the Artura. It's so easy to drive, and the performance threshold you can get out of it, it's a very confidence-inspiring platform. I honestly feel like it's easier to drive to the same limit as a 765 out here, because look at the footage, they look the same. I'm just having fun, smiling, laughing the entire time, so I'm not making any claims or statements. I'm just sharing with all of you my personal experience. It's all on video anyway, so you can uh, live it yourself and let me know your thoughts. I think this is a, a pinnacle for gas-powered supercar engineering it's so good that it's the best of both worlds. They might as well have called it the 750 LTS. Thanks for watching this video if you liked it. Make sure to like button or help me out and subscribe for much more great content coming out your way. Hit the notification bell and the all icon to get all the notifications here on the channel. I'll see you in the next one.